I took this photo along the South Bank Promenade. Um, people thought it was a rubbish bin, but actually it's just a telecom pedestal with rubbish stuck to it. This made me wonder how our cities would look like if we take commodities such as waste collection and disposal for granted. One question that struck my mind, what is actually the fastest growing stream of waste around the world? It's actually e-waste or electronic waste. In 2019, 15 million metric tons of e-waste were generated. And in context, it's around 4,500 Eiffel Towers. According to Insider, these are not just e-waste, but will also become obsolete in the next few years. Right now, you're watching this on an electronic device. Do you ever think about where it'll end up when you're done with it? Many devices contain toxic materials and should be recycled very carefully. Sadly, lots end up in landfills. But even if you're diligent and give your electronic waste, or e-waste, to a recycler, that's no guarantee about what happens next. This is a clip from one of the documentaries I've watched, and after more research, I found out that Australians are amongst the highest disposers of technology, and you can see it in this chart, where currently we're ranked fourth in the world. Good evening everyone, I'm Han and I'll be presenting my museum, the Museum of Electronic Waste. The concept of my design approach derived from the process making of my own personal computer, where different individual components are assembled and formed into one functional piece of technology. It aims to create awareness on the impact of e-waste and educate the visitors through a narrated spatial journey. My site is located at the heart of the Arts Precinct in South Bank. With the existing network and features, pedestrian bicycle traffic, vehicular transportation, and access points, these all helped me define my site approach. Given the boundary, I extruded the volume, set back from the adjacent buildings, created this sense of arrival in front, service access at its rear, and the stairs that extends the promenade into the museum. With the volume, the zoning is divided into three categories, museum space, public space, and services. The volumes are then subcategorized into smaller components and further into a more specific list of programs. The programs are then arranged, stacked together, and finally enclosed with steel trust and perforated facade. In summary, this is the program distribution and the circulation for both museum spaces and back of house spaces. With the physical space identified, I structured the museum experience just like watching a film starting with Gallery 1 as an exposition, Gallery 2 as a setup, Gallery 3 as a plot twist, and down to Gallery 4 for the resolution. As the visitors arrive at the museum and enters from the South Bank Promenade, the stairs is designed to lead them into the atrium where they can now begin their journey. The museum atrium space is designed to be open, bringing natural light from above, and as they progress further into the gallery spaces, it transitions from an open and light space to a darker and enclosed gallery space as they slowly discover more about e-waste. They begin from the first gallery space, where as part of the exposition, old electronics and other temporary exhibits are held here. They will also notice a one-way glass on top of them, but won't be able to see what's behind it. Through the second gallery, which talks about the accumulation, history, recycling process of e-waste through the digital world of LED exhibitions, it then leads them up to a impact gallery, where as part of that curated spatial journey is also the climax of the narrative as they discover the real truth behind e-waste. This space is one of the main focus of my museum. A lot of these recipients in, the, in these e-waste in the third world countries live in this kind of environment as part of their daily life and I wanted to recreate that atmosphere to let all the visitors feel the real impact of e-waste in the world. In section, with the one-way glass, down below, everything seems normal, but on top is the painful reality of what people don't see as they look down to contemplate. From there, through a transition bridge, it leads into the application gallery space, the exposition of the journey, where recycled e-waste such as art sculptures and other creative collections can be displayed as a form to recreate that awareness. Before the journey ends, visitors have a chance to overlook the Melbourne skyline through the perforation as if it's saying that this is our city, together we can do something about it to create a better future. From the exterior, using the simple perforated facade, it almost feels like a book cover. Um, it's neat and clean, reflecting our oblivion and misinformed idea on electronic waste. 
But as the visitors get a glimpse inside through the perforation, it's a bit chaotic, like an interior of a computer, as it carefully reveals the different geometries, shapes, colors, all connected to form one functional architecture. Thank you.